Hello, I'm Tom Moore from the Bar Tipsy Lab, and in this particular video, I want to discuss the notion of concealed carry. Now, with a large proportion of assaults and predatory violence using a weapon, and if they don't use a weapon, they use multiples, training for the deployment of a weapon, so I'm pulling a weapon on you, is very, very important. Having sufficient weapon awareness that you're not caught unawares. Now, it's unfortunate enough that a person that wants to hurt you has a weapon, it's even more unfortunate if you don't see it coming until it's in you or smashing you around the chops. So I'm just gonna take a brief moment to discuss some of the more common ways to carry weaponized articles. Now obviously anything can be weaponized, weapon is an intent. You, know, you can hurt someone with pretty much anything you can find in any room anywhere in the world. So I just wanted to break down some of the more common carrying principles so that you can A, look for them, B, be aware of them, and C, fundamentally understand the level of trickery and artifice which is innately in people that want to do you harm. So these are things that aren't really trained by anyone, they're very, very intuitive. People do them without second thought, but they can catch you unawares experienced or not. So, as I mentioned, a lot of things break down into coshes. So this could be a fixed bat, could be longer, could be shorter. This is a flexible impact cosh. This is a stiletto, but this could be fixed blade, could be short, could be a screwdriver, a bladed thing, or a blunt thing. Both of these, very, very common, especially in Britain, okay? And both of them have a similar pattern of concealment. And obviously, anyone that's looking to do a predatory ambush knows that if they can surprise you, they can get the upper hand, even if they're smaller physiologically, if they're a smaller person, if they've got the jump on you, if they've already decided what they're going to do, and they've got a tool to do that very efficiently, then your days are numbered unless you clock it and have some awareness. So we're gonna go through some of the ways in which people conceal articles on them pre-strike. Now there's another art to looking out for people that have already stored a weapon on them. So weapon storage. And this particular video is going to look at they've already got the weapon in some degree of play. So they've already pre-armed themselves with that weapon in anticipation to strike you during the conversation or interview stages. Someone's gonna ambush you, they're gonna wait till you're not looking, bam, and do you in. There's a fuck we can do about that, other than be aware and not be ambushed. But if we're talking about strikes from a more interview discursive phase, if we're using trickery, if they're using trickery, and then they're gonna strike you, there's some common patterns to watch out for. I'm gonna use Kosh for this, because I don't wanna slice up Bob, but anything that can be done with this, can be done with this. Okay, so one of the first ones to be aware of is a cupped carry. In fact, I'll use the blade for the cupped carry. The cupped carry is as follows. You've got the blade deployed, or if it's fixed blade, it's already deployed. You take it, you invert it, you have it in your hand and you run it along the inside of your forearm. And as you can see, it's relatively easy for you to not see that I've got a weapon. Yep. One of the main things to watch out for is can you see fingers? People don't typically, unless they're highly agitated, have their fist balled. So one of the things you can look out for if one is open and one isn't, that's a good indicator that there may be something in that hand. But typically a cupped carry has the blade like so, tucked along the forearm, and they can converse and they can move, and there's not much about their body which would give it away other than the lack of fingers. It's not a heavy weapon, doesn't alter how I walk, doesn't alter how I talk, doesn't really alter anything about me other than you can't really see my fingers. So again, cupped carry is like so. And you can carry quite long blades in a cupped carry as well. So don't forget, you know, an adult forearm is typically about a foot long. You can get a pretty hefty blade and hold a pretty hefty blade in this cupped carry. You can talk, you can discuss, and essentially the first blow that you're looking at from a cupped carry is something that plunges in. So it typically lends itself obviously to an ice pick style grip, either lunging in with an ice pick stab in there, or slashing across. A slashing across is really more of a, I say trained, but it's pretty stupid to do. In essence, you get a pretty direct forward lunge. So the impetus is a forward facing stab or short, sharp downward stabs. And these could come into the lungs, into the kidneys, into the throat. So you've got kind of more of a forward punching stab and you've got short, sharp shanks which can come from the side on a diagonal or vertical. So a long punching stab or short, sharp peppering shots. So in the cupped carry, 
essentially pretty conversant. One of the things to watch out for is you can't see the fingers and you can hide a pretty long blade. So this is something people do. Often they'll use this hand to distract. So distraction could be verbal. So I could ask you a question. I could be particularly offensive. I could act weird. I could be cracked up. I could push, shove, slap, strike. So I could slap you and draw this in. Whoop, whoop, straight in. Whoop, whoop, straight in. So the first thing that you realize that a weapon is in the fight, it's already fucking in you. Bang, stab, bang, stab. If he's got clothing, they can grab it and start to pepper you up. So again, be very, very mindful of this cupped carry. It's very intuitive, very easy to do. Another important one is in the folded carry. Now the folded carry isn't about folding the knife, it's about folding your arms. So cupped, we can seal it this way, and we talk, and odds are an MO will be a push, a shove, a punch, a grab, an act of unbalancing, an act of kazushi, an act of knocking that man's mental and emotional state and physical state slightly somewhere else, so that getting this into him is very, very easy and you can punctuate very many times in very few seconds. You, know. you can really fuck someone's day up very, very quickly, but often it's precursed by strike, a push, a shove, a grab, and also with verbal or emotional kazushi or unbalancing, asking a question, being threatening, being scary, being strange. These are all things that people use often at the same time. Asking a question, driving a shot in, and taking it from the cupped carry into a shanking. The folded carry is about using either the folded arms, so when the arms are folded, the blade just tucks nicely under here, and you can barely see it. And if you're in Western Europe, on a part of the world that gets pretty, pretty cold, you know, you can act all hunched up, you can cold, you can kind of walk your way up to people asking for change. You know, you can seem pretty meek, pretty sullen. You know, this is a kind of, I call it the sullen man. So, you know, he's shuffling along, He's feeling pretty broken. And it's very hard for you to see from most angles, even from this side, that I've got a bladed article. So again, watch out for this particular ruse where people are small, they're not talking, they're avoiding eye contact, or they're crossing their arms unnaturally. So there's more of a deception in this, in that a shuffle, and then immediately got a cut, an immediate cut. Because obviously if you imagine this is wound up, it cuts, or I have to turn my body somewhat to stab. So cut, I come straight across, or I have to turn my body, and then I begin stabbing. And much like with the cupped grip, this second hand is very, very important too, because it can slap, push, poke, gouge, rag people around. So from the sullen man, you know, whoomp, I can cut straight across, I can cut across the eye line, the throat, across the abdomen, or I can turn and then start to really shank that person in. So that's another one to look out for. So cupped here, very hard to spot. And you can also act a bit more normal here with a cupped grip. You know, you can talk, you can reverse, you can look animated. From the sullen man, you know, that's a lot sneakier, a lot more treacherous. But you've also got essentially folded carry light. Folded carry light, you're still looking pretty alert, pretty proactive, you're still talking, you're still engaged but you are keeping your hands like so, which is not really an immediately suspicious or not suspicious for most people, hand position to have in conversation. So again, you know, a lot of people go palm to palm in this folded carry light, essentially, and I can still use my thumbs, I can still talk and still be animated, I can still shrug, so I can contain all of the movements and body language of normalcy, but at any one moment, I can drive in with a thrust, I can sharply cut out. Often the cut will be backhanded because of where the knife is being held. So it'll be a backhand cut, or well, more often than not, because it's already here, bam. Yep. Criminals are lazy. Lazy means efficient. There's no point in me having to do much shit up here if I can just put it straight in. Straight in, let me just move my body, boom. But again, this folded carry light, it's very hard to see what's coming, okay? So, if you imagine, if I've got a knife out and I want to use it for deployment, I'll have a cupped carry, very hard to see, and I can be animated, I can talk, I'll then use some distraction or kazushi to get some shit in there. I've got the sullen man, the kind of folded, hunched up, you know, this is more for, say, a homelessness ruse, 
or drunk or drug addict, you know, this kind of shiver, and then it's in. This one is a halfway house between the two. I can still look proactive, I can still be dynamic, I can still hold engaging conversation, and I can plunge the knife in. So these are things you need to be aware of. You need to be watching where the hands are. So, you know, immediately suspicious, immediately suspicious, immediately suspicious if you can't see the fingers. Very, very important, okay? Other people like the leg hide. So we've already got the blade in situ. They'll hide the hand somewhat by the thigh or just behind the ass. This one is easier to see coming, but what people will do if Bob's looking at me is they'll angle themselves. So if you're looking at me here, it's obvious I'm hiding one hand. If I start to turn and talk, suddenly it becomes a lot less obvious until the weapon's on you, okay? So often with this, with the behind the leg carry or behind the thigh, behind the ass, it's the turning of the person which is inherently suspicious. It's important to watch the turning anyway without knives because often that is a person's preload to fire in a right hand. It's no different with the blade, but many people, especially if the knife, effect, knife attack is very imminent, behind the arse, behind the thigh, they'll angle themselves somewhat and then it comes in. And the conducive shot for this one, behind the arse, behind the leg, is the immediate shank upwards. The immediate shank upwards is not a particularly good slashing position to come from behind and slash. It's a lot more conducive to a forward stab. With this position, an outward cut is very, very possible. To stab, you have to turn somewhat from cupped position. It's very easy to stab. It's very hard to slash, so it's a lot more close range as a rule. So these are some things to be aware of. Some people will have the blade for immediate access from inside a pocket, so an inner pocket, a waistband access, or a rear pocket access. But in that instance, you've got the opportunity to foil the draw, to stop that blade being brought into play and demolish that person. So that's, you know, that's another video for another time. But if someone has already consciously decided to employ the blade, or is precognizant of the fact that they're going to use a tool, then where they're going to use a kosh, where they're going to use a blade, the most common are sullen man, the cup, the sullen man light, and the behind the leg with an angle off. So these are some of the more common ones you need to look out for, be aware of, but also remember that you can learn from people that do things effectively. So people do this all the time because it's effective. So job one is be aware that people do this, that people cup, that people angle and hold it behind the thigh amidst many other things. But also note that that's something you can easily do too. If you've got a bladed article and you have to use it because of force disparity, or you know, if your life depends on it, you can deploy all of these techniques yourselves. So whether it's from the cup, ask the question, smash in and jam it, you can deploy all of these criminal orientated methods for your own personal use and personal gain. So, you know, as Sun Tzu said, know your enemy as you know yourself. So. Those are some of the ways people conceal blades, but also bear in mind, as I said at the start of the video, even something which is less than lethal, and it will be lethal if it does clock you around the temple or in the wrong place at the wrong time, and the back of the head. So just because it's a kosh, don't think of it as something which isn't as deadly as a stabbing tool. It can be absolutely as deadly and it can turn off the computer very, very quickly. So this is a purpose-made kosh, but you know, fucking tin of sweet corn in a sock will do the exact same thing. The exact same draws can be done with a kosh. So again, this kind of folded carry light, the sullen man, the cupped carry. Now the cupped carry is a little bit harder unless you've got a very flexible kosh. So unless you've got something like uh, a beanie hat with a padlock in it. You know, if you've got something with a bit of flex and spring, then you can do the cupped and smash people right across the face. Although it is a lot more uncommon. What you will typically get with the kosh is the sullen man or this kind of crossed arm carry light or indeed again hiding it behind the back pocket turning faking a question hitting people pushing people and the weapon comes straight into play so again you've got to look out for all of these things because whether it's a pre-fight precursor to a blade a kosh or indeed unarmed often the subterfuge is the same. You know, from the sullen man, whoa, I can smash straight in here. You know, from the cut carry, smash straight up here. You know, from this folded carry light, 
I can strike with either hand in any way or my head with ease. So again, anything that can be indexed with a weapon, anything where a weapon can be hid and used against you with subterfuge, it can be done empty handed with a blade or with a kosh. So do watch out for the signature postures of this, this and this. Cheers.